Get those life vests zipped and clipped, strap down those rods, and stow away those tackle bags because we are going fishing. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Bass Two Anglers podcast. I'm your host, Keith Nicewanger, and I hope this episode finds you with five for 25 that have been thermal scanned, x-rayed, and internally scoped, proving that your catch is legitimate and that you are not a cheater. I hate having to say this every time. It's a nice gesture. Wishing somebody five for 25? Come on, what nicer thing could you say to a bass fisherman? There is nothing nicer you can say. If you get five for 25 in your live well, you have had a great day. It's a day that's gonna stay with you for months, five for 25. I hope you do have five for 25, but with these uncertain times, and we do know there has been some cheating that's taken place, and the fact that there are some guys that are so pathological out there that they can beat a polygraph test, we have to take extra steps to ensure that these catches are legitimate. So I do hope that this episode finds you with five for 25 that have been thermal scanned, x-rayed, and internally scoped. Gotta keep it all legal. Special thanks to our partners who make this podcast possible. Basco Fishing is the official wardrobe sponsor of the Bass Two Anglers podcast. Today, I am wearing the Solar Orange SPF 30 hooded sun shirt. Be sure to check out all the colors and styles by going to their website, BascoFishing.com. Of course, you know by now that we are the Western representatives for ducket fishing, pro-driven rods, reels, and baits. You know these guys, the strongest pro staff in all professional tournament fishing. It is these same pros that put their ingenuity, their lake experience, and their time on the water into all the products that ducket fishing produces. Ducket is building a Western presence, and if you haven't seen it yet, you soon will. New independent dealerships are popping up all the time. Find out about the Ducket lineup of pro-driven rods, reels, and baits by going to their website, ducketfishing.com. Recently, I've been seeing a lot of Instagram posts about a new bait technology that is designed to work with live electronics. Uh, I'm sure many of you know by now that I'm on a personal mission to battle all forces that oppose technology in our sport. These are the people that rant about live electronics ruining our sport. Meanwhile, they use their spot lock, their GPS, their power poles, lake maps, waypoints, smartphones, fluorocarbon lines, graphite rods, laser sharpened hooks. Keith, that's enough. Sorry, honey. <laughs> Deep breath. You know what? We don't need a Bassmaster Senior Tour. We need an Amish bass fishing tour where all the competitors can fish out of rowboats, fiberglass rods, yarn for fishing line. Okay, okay, I'm gonna get it, I'm gonna get it. Okay, I'm good, thank you. Today we have Bo and Laura Terrell on our show and they are the inventors of Echo Baits and the technology that surrounds them, but first, if you like the content we produce, hit the subscribe button, like this video, because they tell me it's supposed to do something good for the channel. I really haven't figured out this whole thing yet. I'm still, I don't know. Are you still new at it if you've been doing it for two years? But subscribe to the video. 
like the video. Even if you don't like it, like the video. It's supposed to do good things. I don't know, money's supposed to fall from the heavens or something. Who knows? Share this video with a friend. Share it with an enemy. Share it with someone whose DMs you want to slide into. But share this video. As always, leave us a comment. We would love to know what you're thinking. We'd love to know what you think about the content we produce. Send us a comment. How hard is that? Now, go ahead, hit that subscribe button. Come on, hit the subscribe button. I'll play some guitar for you while you're doing it. Hit the subscribe button. Thank you. We are building our viewership and your follows mean a lot to us. Our guests today are the founders of Echo Bates, an Auburn, Alabama company that has figured out a little something about how Bates react with live electronics. There's been quite a buzz on Instagram lately about this business. Bo and Laura, welcome to the Bass Stranglers podcast. Thanks for being with us today. Thanks for having us, Thanks Keith. for having us. I've seen a lot of exciting teasers on Instagram. You guys uh, have have jumped into the Instagram world, and I don't know. I don't know how anybody ever gets anything, but I have seen your posts, and I've heard that this new big technology is linked to live electronics. And I got to tell you, uh, as much as Randy Blockett hates live electronics, I love live electronics that much, and so <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of a I just, anything that makes, makes it easier for me to catch a fish, I'm all about. So uh, what are Echo Baits and what is this buzz all about? Well, the, uh, our patent in the uh, technology refers to, I, I 3D printed a big one. Oh, so I love it. it. That is, <laughs> but the, uh, the front of it is, is like a satellite dish. So it's a, it's a concave feature in the, fr in the, front, in the uh, front of the bait. And what that does, it works just like a satellite dish does with satellites in space. It, uh, it gathers and reflects a signal in a certain direction. So if you take your, your rod tip and say, put it over the uh, trolling motor, you know, where your transducer is, you'll be directing all that signal straight back to the transducer. And what that allows you to do is that the bait shows up brighter on the screen and you can see it much further out. So you can basically watch your bait, whereas before you were just seeing the fish. Now you can see the fish and your bait at a great distance and brighter. Yeah, we talked about this the other night. And, and you know, when what I was impressed about it is, is that um, you know, these, these are not necessarily hard baits. These are baits. These are jig heads that are going to allow me to, to swim my most subtle little plastic swim baits and I'm going to be able to see them off into the distance. That's right. Yep. yep we've got, um, this, that's a, uh, 16th ounce. I don't know if you can see that. Or oh yeah. That's, that's, it's relative to your ring there. Yeah. It's very impressive. Yeah. So we got on the ball head style, we're going to have a half, a quarter, uh, an eighth and a sixteenth. So, so you're gonna have. Let's see. That's a that's a half there, mm -hmm. quarter, eighth and a sixteenth. And then I've got a different style head. This is a I just call it a jig head. Um, it's just a little bit different um, design. Uh, it works really well. I've used it with. Uh, some uh, three inch Kytex, three three point two inch Kytex, and I can see it out past a hundred feet. Wow, that, that's that's really amazing. Now you know uh, at I at at iCast last year, there were a few companies that kind of jumped in, and and uh, I think I saw some some jerk baits, uh, something like that, that were supposedly going to react well with live scan. I mean, I can see jerk baits on live scans. I can't see plastic baits though. Right. 
Yep, that's what we're going for. That's uh, that's one of my favorite ways to target bass and crappie. Yeah, swim baits. Swim baits yeah, so. and, and little tiny, you know, the little tiny fluke style. Uh, yeah. Crappy, crappy baits. Um, that I love using those with these little tiny heads. You know, I I, I got to imagine that these would probably work on an A rig pretty well, pretty well, right? Yes, I haven't tried it on A rig yet. But I was going to show you this. We, uh, this is a prototype of an A rig. <laughs> so uh, they they they'll be coming soon. Wow. <laughs> yeah, wow. we design everything, make everything here in our garage in Alabama. So pretty proud of that. Wardrobe for the Bass True Anglers podcast is brought to you by Basco Fishing. High-performance fishing apparel that can be customized to fit your needs. Do you need to showcase your brand? Does your business need apparel? Do you need a tournament jersey? Visit their website at www.bascofishing.com. What What is your background in the sport? What uh, I mean, I, I, you obviously you obviously are a fishing couple, but um, have you have you fished many tournaments? Or what 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 brought you to this point? Yeah, um, I mean, speaking for myself, I grew up fishing mm -hmm. um, with my dad, you know, and basically pond fishing, also lake fishing just throughout Alabama. Um, and then I came to Auburn for college and met Bo. Uh, he's a Florida boy, so he can tell you he grew up, you know, on Lake Okeechobee and then all the other lakes in Florida. So we kind of connected over fishing at Auburn and, uh, you know, the rest is history. We have three kids and um, we're kind of making a go at this. So uh, as far as tournament, tournament fishing, he, he can tell you about what he's done there. So, yeah, I fished the, uh, the ABN last year. Um, we won in Eufaula, qualified for the uh, team championship on Eufaula this past October. I didn't do so well, um, but I still made the, uh, the state team. So I'll, I'll go fish the um, the state championship up in uh, on Lake Douglas in Tennessee. Uh, I think that's in March. Well, and I'm guessing that you must have a similar fascination that I do with live electronics. I, I love looking at fish in the water. <laughs> I can't see fish when they're 30 feet down, but if I can see – if I can see him on my electronics and I can see him moving around and see him following the bait, to me, that's like, that's like being able to see him. I'm, I'm enthralled by that stuff. Oh yeah. yeah. It's really cool. And I mean, we respect traditional fishing. We grew up doing that. You know, we traditional fish with our kids, but live electronics is, is taking fishing to another level. And if, especially if you're going to compete, you got to go there, you know, and it's, it's super cool. Absolutely. No, I, I, I talk to you know anybody that'll listen, and I mean, uh, we all put trolling motors on our boat. I mean, is that cheating? I mean, we all you know we all put you know right. we all put bigger outboard motors on our boat. We all we all went to fiberglass boats. I mean, come on, we you know we're we're using fluorocarbon line. We're not using yarn anymore. Um, <laughs> you know, let's let's fish. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, definitely. You know, they're, not, they're not they're not all on the bank. Well, another thing with the uh, the live electronics, you know, from my experience, what I'm starting to see is that fish are starting to get conditioned to the live, especially on Eufaula when we were fishing piles. Um, <clears throat> you would, if you got too close to the pile, the fish would just shut down. Yeah. So if you got within, say, 50 feet of it, it, mm -hmm. it would just shut down. The fish would, would leave or, or just go to the bottom or up underneath the pile and you couldn't even see them. Um, so what we found worked really well is we'd start about 150 feet out from the pile and then just slowly work our way in. So that, that was a big, big advantage to us there. Yeah. And fish, you know, I mean, I'm sure those fish offshore are starting to see baits all the time, especially at, you know, big lakes. They, they're going, they're going to respond like fish on the bank respond, you know, with, with pressure. Um, so I, I just don't see. I just don't see how it's a uh, how it's bad for fishing. I think you know. First of all, I think we're fishing for populations of fish that haven't been fished for very much. Although now they are, <laughs> now they're getting to that point. But um, 
they they don't just live on the bank. They live uh, they live anywhere they can get what they need to get. That's right. Yep. So you guys are a two person operation, or do you have employees? Or no, right now, right now we're just a two man show. Yeah, two man show, and then a, um, a good friend of ours, Matt Burgess, will be helping us at the shows and stuff like mm -hmm. that. But yeah, as far as making um, everything, designing um, all of that, it's just the two of us in our garage. Well, somebody has a social media background because, as I say, I've been seeing I've been seeing the posts on Instagram, and and I don't know how I got them. I mean, I, I think <laughs> I think somebody that follows you probably follows me or something along those lines. You know how it how the algorithms work. Um, oh yeah but, I, yeah. but I saw this and I thought, oh, something that is built to work with live electronics. I I, I want to investigate, and, yeah. and so so here we are. So you're, you're the, Laura, you're the one that's doing the, uh, the, the social media stuff. That's right. Uh, I'm doing Instagram, which is, uh, Echo Bait Co. Yeah. Echo and Bait then Co., we've right. got Facebook, which is Echo Bait Company. Okay. And our website, we've got a really cool website that's being built right now. So it's under construction. It will be done the month of January and it's going to be echobaitco.com. Very good. So um, I don't really have a social media background other than just my own personal pages, but right. um, I, I've kind of taken it under my wing because I'm so excited about this and I just want to get it out. So, you know, I'm trying to make connections and trying to get us on podcasts and in, in magazines and whatever we need to do to get the word out because we believe in this Echo Bait and we believe it's going to help take a lot of people to the next level and we're just excited about it. So, and it's all about making connections and getting the word out there. And, you know, Bo, uh, I got to tell you, you are the first guest I've ever had on the show that that even knows how to use a 3D printer. You must have some kind of background in that in that area, right? Yes. Yes, sir. I, I've got a, uh, a master's degree in industrial design, so I'm a product designer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, products other than fishing products. Yeah, um, I've spent the last, well, pretty much my whole career uh, designing outdoor cooking equipment, so smokers, okay. fryers, grills, but uh, my passion's always been in fishing, so that's what, what I'm really looking to get into. Yeah, yeah, well, I, I, I mean, it's a great industry. I mean, there's so many, so many interesting people and good people, and, and I, I, that's why we do podcasts, you know, I mean, you want to... You want to be a part of something big and good like that. And I, I completely understand that. Um, so I was going to ask you about the website. Oh, when, when is the when is the public going to get to see these things? Well, our first, I guess, official debut will be the East Tennessee Fishing Show. That's into January. So we will be there. After that, we've got the Alabama Fishing Show. We'll be there. Um, and our plan is to get to ICAST. So we're super excited about all of those shows, um, you know, meeting people and just letting them see who we are and see what we have. And, you know, just just really excited about that. Yeah, our plan is to have, have the website up by uh, the East Tennessee Fishing Show, which starts on January 26th. Yes. And uh, you will be able to order off the off the website. Yeah. Yeah. By that date, we're going to have the bait on the website and choose what you want, read about it buy it all that so we're pumped about that do you do you, um, do you imagine these being in stores or do you uh do you, uh, we, do you think you'll just sell them off the website if we get an offer to put them in a store yep. <laughs> Nobody, nobody's there. offered yet because not a whole lot of people have seen what we have right but right. uh you know i i expect it's going to be pretty big um but you know i'm excited to get out and make personal connections with people to start with and just, you know, see how excited people are about this. Um, hopefully as excited as us. And then if the big boxes come along or whatever, you know, we'll entertain what they have to say. Change. It's inevitable. To improve, you must adapt. The sport is evolving. Paradigm shift is a fundamental change of basic concepts. Don't get left behind. Introducing Paradigm. Paradigm Reels by Ducket Fishing. Pro-driven. I, I think I got to ask the question, 
you've got that kind of concave face on it. Maybe you can hold up that that big one so we can look at that one more time. You've got that 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 concave face on it. Does that change the way it falls or swims or anything? It does. It uh, it actually slows it down a hair. Oh and uh, with the, the smaller, really light, uh, crappy jig heads, it actually gives it a wobble. Wow. A very slight wobble. And uh, the fish react very well to it. Yeah, you know, so you, I think if anything, that helps. Well, what I was thinking when I first saw it was scrounger head, kind of like a scrounger head. Um, yeah. So, so that concave actually gives some action to it. That's pretty neat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Did you design it that way, or did it happen that way? No, that was the original idea. Was uh, when uh, me and my buddy Matt Burgess were talking, we were trying to think of different ways we could make uh, the sonar return stronger with uh, a lure. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, we we just decided, you know, keep it simple, stupid. Don't don't reinvent the wheel. A satellite dish is like the best reflector there is that's ever been designed so yeah. which i that's what i did is i tried to incorporate that into a bait and have you had a chance to fish these in any kind of tournament competition yet i have not 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 in a in a competition yet but um i actually just got my mold so we're just just now starting to run those yeah first okay. opportunity we get we'll be out there with them so there yeah the first is. opportunity i get will be in uh february so that'll be after our East Tennessee fishing mm -hmm. show. So really, that's going to be the first time people get to put their hands on these is East Tennessee fishing show. Now, you mentioned something about a patent. So you've applied for a patent on this? Yes, we are. We are patent pending with this uh, with that feature. OK, uh, because, you know, this industry loves to knock off baits. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. We expect that. That's why we've kind of crossed our T's and dotted our I's on this. So. Yeah. yeah, very <laughs> yeah. good. Yeah. Very good. Um, you know, when I see that small, that small head, one of the things that comes to my mind is, uh, is fishing a Senko, uh, the way we fish, uh, like wacky style with a, with a, with a rubber band through it and just kind of hook through that like that. Um, that to me sounds like it would be something you could throw that out there and watch that thing on, on live scope. I didn't even think about that. You're exactly right. That's going to get bit, right? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I mean, that's a bait that almost suspends. Yeah, exactly. Very yeah, I didn't even think about that. Well, I mean, you, you know, uh, people fish Ned rigs and things like that. But I, I I, mean, out here in California, when it gets tough, which is most of the time, it seems like we got to we got to fish a lot of weedless, uh, weightless type um, baits like like a Senko that, that'll fall slowly. I'm looking at that 16th ounce head and thinking, man, in deep water, that would fall just about right. Just about yeah. right. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Very cool. That's the uh, 16th ounce. And this is, oh, I'm sorry, this is the 8th ounce and this is the 16th ounce. Just to show yeah. you. you and, and those show up, those show up on a, on a, on a live, live electronics just as well as the, as the bigger ones, huh? Well, I mean, it, a little less. You can uh, see it. You, you you can see it, but it's not as much surface area, mm -hmm. you know, right. reflecting right. Uh, the signal. But um, it, it definitely is light years ahead of the, your traditional jig head. Well, that is that is that is very exciting. I was going to ask you, you know, do you see expanding to other kinds of baits uh, other than other than other than jig heads and a rigs? Uh, do you do you? Do you envision that? Where where would you see your lineup five years from now, for example? Well, I've already started working on a crankbait that actually has has it in the the top of the head. Um, but I mean, I, you could pretty much anything that that goes under the water. So you know, spinner baits, uh, jerk baits. I mean, anything that you can think of, you can let your imagination run there. And uh, I plan on hopefully just doing it as fast as I can. Yeah. yeah, we've got big plans right now. We're starting with these, but we've got, we've got a lineup yeah. uh, that we hope is going to be coming that we're pumped about. I just think it's so interesting because, uh, you know, to me, making a bigger bait seems like the thing to do 
to get it on, to be able to see it well far out from the boat. Unfortunately, you throw those bigger baits out, but the fish don't bite the bigger baits. You know, you throw a big glide bait out there. You can see a glide bait well over 100 feet away mm -hmm. and they'll come oh, yeah. up to it and you'll get excited and then they'll swim away from it. And, you know, that goes on all day long. At the end of the day, you haven't caught any fish, but you've seen them all over the place. That's that's yep. my story. Um, but being able to fish something really subtle uh, like that um, is very intriguing. Got to say, very intriguing. I appreciate you guys taking some time with us tonight to talk about this. I uh, I, I hope that, uh, you know, a year from now, we're talking about this explosion of of, uh, of echo baits and, and you know, the, the high demand and how you're struggling to keep up with all the, with all the <laughs> orders. And everything, you know, yes. yes. <laughs> um, Me too. But uh, congratulations on the idea. Good luck. And uh, we we'll look forward to watching your progress. Thank, Thank you. you. We appreciate you having us on. We really yeah. do. Yeah. Well, it's it's a it's a neat story, and and you know it's obviously a story that's just beginning, and it's a story that we all want to see see where it goes. Thank you. Absolutely. All right. Take care. I think ultimately why we do these things, why some of us do podcasts, why some of us videotape ourselves fishing why some of us start lure businesses is because ultimately we want to be part of the fishing industry. The fishing industry is a very special industry and it, it's because of the people that are in the industry. You're not going to find a more genuine down to earth population of people than anglers. They just are the best people. And we all want to find our niche in this community. Uh, Bo and Laura, I think are onto something. I think the idea that they've got is a little different than what other companies have done. I know that some companies have uh, made their baits more flat sided and so on to show up on live scope, but this is a, a different situation. This is actually a reflective technology that I think is going to be something that is going to take fishing a little bit further than it is. And again, I'm an advocate for technology and sport, and this certainly is technology and sport. It'll be a lot of fun over the next few weeks and months to see where this business goes. Well, folks, that's going to do it for this episode. Thanks again for tuning in. Until next time, keep both hands on the wheels. Keep those life vests zipped and clipped, and we will talk to you again very soon.